Thanks for stopping them horses. Get on down there. Come on. Where are you going? Get over there and get that stage. Come on, old man. Hurry it up! You cover them, Wilt. I'll get the box. We're after that gold shipment. I'm afraid you're a bit late. Shut up. No gold in here. Go look in the boot. The driver mentioned it went out yesterday. Well, he's telling the truth. All right, get your boots off. Get them off or you'll die in them. All right, get walking. Get walking, go on. Too good. I sure did have my heart set on some gold. We're just going to have to go down to Stockton and get it. Hey! Would you mind going to the next window? I was just cl Oh, well, now. We'd like to open up an account. An account? Well, yes, ma'am. You've come to the right bank and uh, the right window. <laughs> oh, if you'll just fill out this form. Uh, it's just one thing. Uh, we heard tell there's been some robberies around here. Is this uh, bank safe? You sure of that? You got a good, strong vote. Well, there it is, right there. It, uh, it's the latest. Came all the way from St. Louis. Hey, if it wasn't safe, you can bet the Cattlemen's Association wouldn't put their money in it every Friday. Sure looks strong. Uh, we have a deputy making the rounds every night also. Every hour on, on the hour. On the hour. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Sign the papers, Grady. Oh, uh, there's a, a pen right over there. Um... Are you and, uh, and your husband are going to live nearby? Well, it depends if we can find the property that we're looking for. And uh, he's my brother, not my husband. 
Oh. Well, if I may um, offer my services, perhaps I could have the pleasure of showing you around some afternoon. I, there are some very, very fine places for sale. I don't know if a lady would be safe with you when you're out of your cage. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll let you know. Grady, you can take me to lunch. Him and his old vault. Came all the way from St. Louis. Hey, hey. Maybe we ought to send him a letter back there, you know. Uh, compliment them on it and all. <laughs> After we bust it open. Well, uh, you pay the check. And um, be sure and leave a big tip. We're going to be able to afford it. Jesse? Supplies. No, you go get them. I've got a hankering for some five card draw poker. You gonna play poker? Hmm. Dilly, you make yourself noticeable. People notice me anyhow. Well, yeah, yeah. Carl and Wilt are waiting first. I'll be out later. Besides, I feel lucky today. Poker, young lady. Not part cheesy. I think I'll sit right here. We well, won't feel a bit good taking your money, ma'am. Name's Dilly. Dilly Shanks. And I won't feel a bit bad about taking yours. Playing cards with a woman, that's no game. Who's deal? Yours. We uh, each get five cards. Dollar ante, five's the limit. If that don't scare you off now. Deal. Cowboy. I'll try to. I ain't even gonna try. Two. And, um, I think I'll help myself to one. Cowboy. Looks like today's not my day. Oh, day's not over yet. Well, let's play cards. A dollar. You got yourself bit, mister. And a race. You're bluffing, that's what I think. I'm bluffing? Raise me. A call. Feel that straight, slick as butter. Yeah, it was slick, all right, just like every other hand you've dealt. Now, are you trying to tell me something, mister? I think you've been jennying up the cards. That's what I think. You said that nice and loud. Now, don't you keep me waiting too long for an apology. Well, I, uh... Come on, mister. You can speak a lot plainer than that. Apologize. Why, thank you. Well, I guess that ends the game. Uh, say, Heath, you're gonna have time to help me with that fencing tomorrow? Or do your feet hurt you too much? Nothing wrong with my hands. I'll tackle that section down by the sawmill bridge. Thanks, Heath. Miss Dilly, if you'll excuse me. 
<laughs> you work for him? No, he's a neighbor. Just helping out. They say God helps them that helps themselves. Pretty hard-hearted, aren't you? As I have to be, when I have to be. Anyways, that critter ought to know it ain't right to call Lady a cheat. I think he just learned that lesson. I tell you what, Heath. My, that sure is a pretty name. Um, seeing that I'm the big winner, how about me buying you a drink? Hmm? No thanks. I got to be going. But uh, when I'm ready, I'll buy you that drink, Mr. Dilly. Sit around and crochet doilies? <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's funny, Will. Oh, hush up. You two go into town, you get into nothing but trouble. It took you so long. And we want to do that bank and get out of here. I want us some money. That's what took me so long. Besides, we're going to let that bank wait. Wait? We know how to get in and out of there. What do we got to wait for? Grady, you wouldn't know beans in a bag. You heard the tale of blabbing about the Cattlemen's Association making a big deposit on Friday? Yeah, maybe so, but I sure get jumpy having to hang around. Yeah, me too, Dilly. Why don't we just grab that gold like we planned and be on our way? And just forget about the extra money. Hmm. Not by a jugful. We'll take the bank on Friday. But I don't like it around here. Well, I do. So that settles that. to move it. Oh. What happened? Oh. Oh, my horse, it just ran off. Oh. The horse doesn't look too wild to me. Well, who knows what goes on in a horse's head? Or in a woman's? What's that? Well, it could have happened. I doubt it. I don't think too many horses got the nerve to run away with you. You know, I'm beginning to like it around here more and more. Well, are you planning on settling here? Well, my brother Grady and I are looking for some land to buy. We aim to be real neighborly. You married? Nope. Promised anyone? No. Well, how about you being real neighborly? And Well, you must know some places around here for sale. How about showing me a few? Well, maybe, if uh, you promised to teach me to play poker like that. <laughs> Well, my daddy was a gambler on them Mississippi riverboats. They used to call him Velvet Harry because he dressed so well and had such good manners. He used to have his hair cut twice a week. And he sure knew his way around a deck of cards. Why, well, ever since I was just little Dickens, he used to play with me. I think the first words I ever learned were, Annie up, folks. Well, I'll tell you what, Dilly. I was just about ready to finish up here. If you're heading into town, well, I'll buy you that drink now. How would you like a nice, uh, lemonade? Lemonade? Why, yes. I think I'd like that. Going to 
the bank with me, Audrey? Oh, no, thank you. I want to look at some clothes. You brought enough clothes home from Europe to sink the boat. I said look, not buy. See you at Jerry's. Excuse me. I was just about to try that on. What do you think? I think it's very becoming, but I... I think it could be straightened a little. Well, maybe you could use some straightening yourself. You did ask me. I wasn't talking about the hat. I was talking about you and Heath. Well, what about us? Who are you? I happen to be a very close acquaintance of his, if you want to know. A close acquaintance? Mm. More than a close acquaintance, if you want to know. And I'm telling you, whoever you may be, that you just better keep away from him or you're going to be sorry. I gather you have a romantic interest in him, Miss, Miss Shanks. And you gather rightly. Now, look, um, I don't aim to get ugly about this. It's just that, well, love, we have an understanding, that's all. I see. Well, you certainly don't have to worry about me, Miss Shanks. I could never be a rival of yours. Glad to hear it. Besides, Heath and I, we plan to see a lot more of each other. So if you'll just excuse me. I have some things to buy. Then she said you'd better keep away from him or you'll be sorry. Well, you should have told her that uh, you were his sister. Audra, you could have been shot stone cold dead. I didn't <laughs> think of that. Well, you know what they say. Hell hath no fury like a... Well, for a minute there, I thought I forgot to put my pants on. <laughs> Morning. Morning. I uh, say, Nick, I won't be able to check out that will this afternoon. Oh, it can wait. You, uh, have something more interesting to do? I promised to show somebody around the old Webster place. Uh, anyone I know? I don't think so. Pass it, butter. It's right in front of you. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Morning, Mother. Good morning, Heath. Good morning. Well, I know it's very early in the morning, but I detect something's going on. What is it? Nothing, really. I, I was just about to tell Heath I met a friend of his yesterday in town, a, a Miss Shanks. She seems to think quite a lot of him. Was oh, that right? Pass the sugar. Right in front of you. Oh, more than that. She just about challenged Audra here to a duel. I understand Audra wouldn't stand a chance. She draws like a hired gun. Well, she sounds like a fascinating creature. I'd like to meet her. Oh, we'd all like to meet her. Meantime, why don't we let Heath have his breakfast in peace? Yes, we ought to let him have a peaceful breakfast. Because he's probably in for an exciting afternoon. Of course, it'd be a lot of work, but there's water here, and that's the main thing. Water, that's the main thing. How many head of cattle your brother figured on running? Well, I don't know for sure. You like this place, Heath? Well, who wouldn't? It's some of the best land in the valley. Did you ever think about settling down? Having a place of your own? Oh, I've got my own place. You do? My family and I, we run a few head. Family. That ain't the same as having a place of your own. You know, like a man and a woman having theirs. Do you ever think about that? Well, it passes through my head every once in a while. Funny. I never thought about such a thing in my whole life before. Yeah, well, uh, guess we better be getting back, huh? I sure do like you, Heath. Thank you, Dilly. I, I like you. Well, that ain't what I mean. What I mean is, uh, well, I guess I mean I love you. Love me? <laughs> we just met. Oh, well, don't you go laughing at me. Well, I know it ain't a girl's place to be saying it first, but... When I have something on my mind, I say it right out, okay? Okay. Well, if you're surprised, it ain't nothing compared to what I am. Why, if somebody told me I'd be feeling this way, I... But I do. That's all there is to it. Why else would I feel like... Well, like there's a big bell ringing inside me every time I even just think about you. Do you love me, Heath? Just a little bit? 
Well, you don't have to answer that. Not yet. All I know is that I love you, that I want you, and that I'm gonna have you. That wasn't so bad, was it? You no, know, Dilly, that, uh, that was nice. Well, now you understand how things are. I don't think you understand. When I love a woman, it's got to be in my own time. Why, sure, Heath. Take your time. Take all the time you want. And it's got to be in my own way. And she's, well, well she's just got to let it happen. And I've got to do all the courting. Sure, Heath. You can't help the way you feel, neither. I understand. Let's get back. Swipe it, I bought it. Hey, get your hands off that. I don't want you to mark the trim. What do you go spend all our money for? You don't need a saddle like that. Besides, it's kind of big for you in it. Quit your bleating. It ain't for me. Well, who's it for then? A personal friend of mine. Not that it's any of your how to do. Hey, just what I've been aiming to do. Take a bath. Well, now, wait, wait a minute. It's my turn now. After me. You, uh, um, you, uh, figuring on giving this saddle to that big cowboy you've been seeing? <laughs> you must be pretty sweet on him. You know he was one of them passengers on the stage, don't you? I was wondering where I've seen him before. Now, as to whether I am sweet on him or not, what if I am? Oh, uh, well, uh, no one's saying that you can't have your fun, Dilly. <laughs> You've done it before. It's just that uh, you uh, start getting serious, and that's trouble. That's nothing but trouble. you got to remember that we got that bank waiting for us, and then we're on our way. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any to tell you. I'm staying in Stockton. Well, what kind of talk is that? Dilly, what are you going to do in Stockton over by yourself? Well, that's just plain dumb. It ain't so dumb to own your own ranch. There's a place around here I can get reasonable. Besides, I'm getting married soon. You? Married? <laughs> hey, pretty good. <laughs> uh, did he ask you? Just about. Well, he ain't the type that goes around passing out proposals to every girl he meets. But he's just as good as told me that we'll be getting married soon. Now, uh, you know that there ain't no cowboy makes enough money to keep a wife, especially one like you. He's got some land of his own. And a few head. That, on top of what I intend to buy for us, do pretty good. Well, uh, let me see now. Uh, you you plan on settling down and working a few acres of land and running a few head and, and uh, <laughs> living happily ever after, huh? You just call the turn, Grady. Me and he, we're gonna settle down, work the spread, put in a few saddle stock, and the best breed of cattle. And I'm gonna have my own garden, just outside the kitchen. Well, naturally, well, someday, we'll have a few children, five or six. And they'll work, work right alongside their daddy. Gosh. Can we come see you? Sure. But I don't want you hanging around too long. That is nice. That's nice. That's real pretty. But uh, where are you going to get the money for this ranch? For my share of the bank on Friday. That's still on. I'm going with you. It's just going to be my last time, that's all. Then you boys are going to be out on your own. Uh, let's just uh, get out of here and give her a little privacy. What are we going to do without Dilly? And you know she's the one who does all the figuring. There ain't no reason why we can't do all right without her. You think that you're fooling yourself? 
We ain't nothing without her. You know it. Maybe she'll let me come stay with her when she gets married. She ain't getting married. Well, Grady, you heard what she said. I said she ain't getting married. We're gonna make sure that that cowboy don't marry nobody's sister. Said that. Oh, he lived by it, too. Had to be in the boss of the lumber company. I guess that was before he became a riverboat gambler. I never could remember which one was first. Come here. How you like the saddle, Heath? <laughs> well, that's probably the fanciest saddle I ever saw in my life. It's yours. Dilly, I can't accept this. Well, why not? That rig of yours is all worn out. Well, that's not it. Uh, a girl giving a man an expensive gift like that, well, it just isn't right. Well, I don't see why not. You care for somebody. You just naturally want to give them things. Dilly, if anyone around here is going to be given presents, it's going to be me. You want to repay me for it? You can take me out to dinner. And I do mean dinner. Let's see, steaks, wine, lots of them fancy little cakes. Dilly, this, this saddle's worth a thousand dinners. You just talk me into it. A thousand dinners, starting tonight. But, Dilly. Dilly, there are a few things we got to talk about. Later. After dinner. Come on. Yes, it is. A gift from someone? How'd you know? Because I know you, and that's not the kind of a saddle you'd buy for yourself. From Dilly? Yeah. Well, she must think an awful lot of you. I guess so. And you, Heath? She's not like any girl I ever met, Mother. She's one of a kind. I've heard stories. Well, they're true. She's as ladylike as a rebel yell. She gambles, she... Uh, she chases a man instead of the other way around. She uh, says exactly what she feels. I guess you might say she's like a little girl. Just plum full of surprises. You never know what she's gonna do next. But uh, when I'm with her, I... Well, I don't know, I... I feel like smiling all the time. But you're returning the saddle. Well, it's the third time today I've loaded it up. I don't want to hurt her feelings, but I can't accept this. Otherwise, she'll think you feel something you really don't, huh? That's exactly it, Mother. And whatever it is I feel, I, I don't think it's love. Then she has a right to know that, if you're sure. I'm sure. Barkley Ranch? This is the Barkley Ranch, miss. All of it? From the gate. The one back yonder, about five miles? That's the one. Oh, wait. Mrs. Barkley, this young lady is looking for Mr. Heath. He left for town. Oh. Oh, well, that's all right. I was just out riding and I thought I'd drop by. But it's okay, because he's going to be taking me out to dinner tonight. You must be Miss Shanks. Dilly. Please, come in and have some coffee with me. Oh, all right. Silas. He must have told you about me. A little. Well, he ain't exactly talkative. 
Not like I am. I think maybe that's one of the reasons I feel about him the way I do. Anyway, I could never get along with anybody like me. You're in love with Heath, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. And that's coming straight at me. And I'll tell you something else. He loves me, too. And one of these days, we aim to be married. Oh? Well, he hasn't exactly come out with it yet. But he's sure been hitting round. Miss Shanks, I... Dilly, I know Heath pretty well. And he's not the kind that hints around. Are you really sure he feels this way? Well, I know him pretty well, too. And I say we aim to be married. And I hope you ain't got to talk against it. No. No, I'd be happy to welcome any girl of Heath's choice. It's just that I feel... Well, maybe you don't think I'm good enough for a place like this. Well, let me tell you, my daddy was in the cotton business down south, and we had a house big as this, even bigger. Well, it's not a question of a house or how big it is. I'm talking about Heath's feelings for you. You see, Dilly, when you love somebody and you want a future with them, it's very easy to misunderstand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I know what you're talking about. I ain't that green. You just don't take to me. Well, that's plain. But it ain't gonna stop us. No, Dilly, no, you're mistaken. You pick a fight with me, Mrs. Barkley, and you're gonna lose. And maybe even get hurt in the bargain. You could have taken care of them yourself, Heath. But I sure am glad I come right. Something wrong? You always clean a gun like that, Dilly? Well, my daddy used to teach the Army how to use and protect their weapons. So every time I shoot... Every time you shoot? Well, when I'm out hunting and all. Well, Heath, what's the matter? You said you came in on that stage Thursday morning. You and your brother? I don't recollect that. You don't recollect saying it, or you don't recollect coming in on that stage Thursday? Come to think of it, I couldn't have been on the stage Thursday. That was the day there was some sort of fuss. You were on the stage Thursday. Oh, well, no, I don't recollect saying that. Well, I just, uh, there was talk. Yes, that's it. We come in Friday morning. You came in on the stage Friday morning? Mm-hmm. Dilly, there's no stage in to Stockton until late Friday afternoon. Now, who are those men? How should I know? Because they stopped shooting when they saw you. Four riders who held up that stage. Their leader cleaned a gun like you just did. You're talking crazy. I don't think so, Dilly. It was you who led those riders. It was you who killed that stage driver. Now, those men, who are they?
Them three's my brothers. And the four of you, a gang. How long you been in this business? Ever since we found out farming the Hard Rock Farm was as good as being dead. So you took up robbing and killing people? That's right. We did. I've been all over, seen plenty, had exciting times, and I liked it. That's the truth. I did like it. I guess we just weren't the type to sit on a hard rock farm and without a dime in our pockets. So to put a dime in your pockets, your brothers are ready to kill for $6.20. That's exactly what I've got on me. That ain't why they bushwhacked you. They tried to kill you because of me. I told them that we were getting married. Married? How could you tell them that? You know, that's not true. But you don't understand, Heath. I've given up all that wife stuff. I'm gonna settle down and make you a good wife. Tilly, just because you want something, that doesn't mean that's the way things are. Well, what about the Webster place? You said you liked it, and you said you want to settle down someday and be married. Nobody'd try and make you a better wife than me, Heath. I swear it. Besides, I never met anybody like you before. I'd do anything for you. I'm so in love with you. Dilly, I'm not in love with you. And even if I could be, this changes everything. Can't you see that? Sure you're not in love with me. Rich folks never take to anybody but their own kind. I seen that big house of yours and that fancy butler. What would you want with plain folks like me? Dilly, I saw you kill a man. Forget that. I don't think I could. Well, I help you forget it, Heath. Heath, I've changed. I know I have. I'd do anything in the world for you. I'd be anything. Please help me, Heath. I'm sorry, Dilly. I'd like to walk away and forget I ever met you, but I can't. Turn around. You would have turned me in, wouldn't you? I'd have turned you in. You just gotta naturally tell the truth, don't you? Killing me's not gonna change things. Well, it might make me feel a whole lot better. Now, I've got another plan for you, so you just get off. Come on, move. Time up, Will. Get on over there. Up against you? the post. Put your hands behind your back. Time up. Well, now, Dilly, isn't that a funny way to treat your intended? Don't you give me none of your jaw. He ain't gonna be nobody's intended. Then what's he doing here? We're gonna use him when we take the bank. Use him? Oh, ain't you got nothing in that head of yours? With him around, nobody's gonna start shooting at us. <laughs> Boy, you sure are singing a different tune about him now, ain't you? You never mind my tune. He tried to make a fool out of me. And I don't take that off nobody. Tried to. I think he'd done it. <laughs> Look, you said all you're gonna say on that, because I don't want to hear no more about it. No, sir. Nobody at that bank's gonna start shooting at him. Him and his family own half of this valley. What are you gonna do with him when we're through? Well, there'll probably be some shooting there. He's liable to be hit by a stray bullet while we're riding out, huh? <laughs> Grady? That's the best idea you had all year. Well, I... I sure didn't expect him home early. From what I saw of Dilly, saying goodnight's not gonna be that easy. Pretty girl, full moon shining down. Could have just changed his mind, you know.
You hmm. wouldn't have heard thunder. Go on. Huh? Go on! What? You know, this is playing crazy, Dilly. I know that bank. It's too well guarded. You'll never get away with it. Well, if you'd loved me like I loved you, none of this would have happened. I can't help the way I feel. Well, you never gave it a chance. I know I've done some bad things. I ain't saying anything different. But I got some good in me, Heath. I know I do. If you'd just taken to me, all that good would have come pouring out. You wouldn't have noticed anything else. It just doesn't work that way, Dilly. Well, that's all you can say, ain't it? Well, I wouldn't take your love now if you offered it to me on a silver tray. Trouble with you is you don't know what a woman is. A real woman, like me. I know you're a real woman, Dilly. You don't know nothing. You ever been kissed like this? Hmm? Or like this? All right, Dilly. We're getting out of here right now. He wasn't worth it. I'm glad it's over. It ain't over yet. Dilly. Not until I give him one last thing to remember me by. But, but he's gone. Dilly, he's got our fastest horse, and we can't catch him in the dark. The ranch is there. It hasn't moved. Mr. Heath Barkley won't be so high and mighty with that fancy house of his a pile of ashes. You, you mean burn him out? Right down to the ground. Dilly, he's going to get the sheriff. We got no time. We got time? They ain't going to look for us there. Now, look, you don't want to come along. You get your own self out of this fix. Well, we best be fast about it then. Come on. I should go on to bed. I'll turn those on. I thought you'd gone to sleep. No, oh, I felt a little restless, so I thought I'd do some work on the payroll. Good night. Good night. You get the house.
leave it burned. I said leave it. to the sheriff the Cordilli's brothers. Uh, I didn't think they'd make it without her. Well, perhaps Dilly would have made it if she hadn't come back for you. Never did get around to returning the saddle. Why didn't you? I don't know. So you going for a ride? Mm-hmm. You know, I got a hundred things to do, but mind if I go along? I was just about to ask you. exactly what I'd buy for myself, but I kind of like it. Well, it ain't helping it to sink in any better by the repeating of it, is it? We're all on the same short water ration, same as me. All on account of the same stupidity of this here stage line. You're all acting like I'm first cousin to a local weed because I'm the only one that's got sense enough to holler about it. Well, seeing as we're practically nose to nose, maybe you ought to stop hollering just out of respect to the ladies. Well, my hollering ain't going to bother that girl now, not with what ain't her. Why don't you shut up? No, it ain't that I don't have feelings for her sickness, ma'am, or respect for you. It's just that when something riles me, I gotta let it out. Well, I think you've done just that, Mr. Lasseter. But no amount of complaining will fix a leaky water barrel or replace the water we lost, will it? No, complaining won't do that, no. But if we all stuck together, all right, we might be able to get back half of our bear. Why, Mr. Lasseter, I'm disappointed in you. Man who owns his own gold mine, nuggets sticking out of his pockets. I suppose it's the business of a professional gambler to know what's in everybody's pockets, Mr. Matson. But you ain't going to be any more hopeful of getting me into a stud poker game in Stockton as you was back in the depot waiting for this stage. Well, if everybody was as astute as you are, Mr. Lasseter, I would have to find myself a new occupation, which no doubt would be good for my soul, but would certainly deprive my spirit. <laughs> I suggest we all just uh, keep quiet and allow Mrs. Barkley and her daughter to get a little rest. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Matson. But please don't let our presence interfere with your pleasure. My daughter and I have overcome bigger problems. Stop and 
for water rations? We're stopping for a lame horse. You can all get out and stretch your legs. Uh, Miss Barkley, I uh, make it my business to mind my own, but I just can't help thinking a girl as beautiful as your daughter certainly should be blessed with a voice to match. She has a beautiful voice. I've been on some hard luck trips in my life, but this beats it. Fool horse picked up a pebble under his shoe. Now, you ain't gonna stop to rest him, are you? I gotta be in Stockton tomorrow. I ain't resting him. I'm leaving him. He can't hardly touch ground with that hoop. But we're three hours late already. And you're gonna be later. All right, everybody, half a cup of water each, no more, and let's make it fast. I haven't had enough trouble. Now we gotta lose a horse. Hey, 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 you heard the man. Half a cup. This is for the women. Can't hold them to half rations. Miss Barkley? When she finishes this, uh, I'll bring you some more. Well, it seems to me you brought us our full quota. I'll share it with her. Well, nobody minds if the women have a bit more. We do. But thank you just the same. Audra, I have some water for you. Now, Audra, I know you're thirsty. And we're not going to get any more water for a long time. So please turn around and you can have some. Audra? Let's head him up. Come on, yeah. We're short of water, driver. We're short of water, and we're shy of horse. You can't expect this stage land to be worried about that. Well, now, Mr. Lassiter, the company figured there'd be days like this when there'd be lame horses and leaky water kegs and bothering and complaining passengers. So they set up relay stations. There's one maybe 10, 15 miles down the trail. Well, why didn't you say so? Why didn't you ask? Let me help you, ladies. Chance Roy is a game called Jemaine de Fair. You won't find that game played in any of the army barracks or in the saloons. Europe is where they play that game. Europe, where they never even heard of five card stud. And that's where I'm going to take my woman when we get married. Got a nice sound to it, don't it? Honeymoon in Europe. You contemplating marriage, Mr. Lester? I didn't know that. Oh, yes. That's why I'm going to Stockton. That's where she's waiting for me. Hmm. A man spends 20 years getting rich, and in one second, just long enough to say I do, he loses half his fortune. Perhaps that one second will enrich his life far more than a gold mine. Well, now, that depends upon the woman, Mrs. Barkley. That depends upon the woman. Takes a woman to recognize quality. Now, wouldn't you say she had quality, ma'am? Ah, oh, yes, she's lovely. Congratulations. Hey, we got company. Hey! Hey, let that fella catch up with us. Let him ride inside. Hitch up another horse. Uh I don't think he plans on joining us. Well, all right. 
gonna be so doggone private. Lasser, I suggest you get it out. I'm a prospector, not a gambler. I never had any need of weapons. Well, you've been lucky so far. I sincerely hope your luck holds out. What does that mean? Well, he may have things on his mind other than gold. There are many reasons a man might use a gun. Nobody's riding shotgun on this stage, so he's got to know we're not carrying a strong box. I've got 3,000 gold nuggets on me. If he comes at me, I'll give $500 to the one who cuts him down. $500. Well, if he is interested in money, I think he's after higher stakes. Mrs. Barkley is a rich woman. She'd bring a big ransom. You'd have to climb over me. And I don't need no offer of pay, either. Seems to me I spend the best part of this journey thanking you. That soldier suit sure gives you a lot of guts, don't it, Sonny? Well, maybe everybody's right. Maybe he don't want money. Maybe he just wants revenge. Maybe he's a breed out there under those white man's clothes, looking for revenge for the massacre of his tribe that you soldier boys pulled off. I never massacred nobody. I never had this uniform on until three days ago. I just signed up and I got a two-week furlough before I have to report. Mr. Lassiter, you haven't said one right word since you got on this stage. Well, maybe this is the right one. Maybe he's after you. Maybe you second-carded him in a poker game and won his ranch. Or here in your low opinion of women, maybe you ruined his sister or took his wife. Maybe you'd like to get your head blown off. Put up the gun, Matson. You're scaring the girl. I didn't mean nothing. I didn't mean nothing. Put up that gun, I said. Stay out of this, Roy. Wouldn't you say, gentlemen, that the rider out there is getting just what he wants? We're at each other's throats. Hey, he's gone. Horses and water and... Oh, now, I never was one to hold grudges, and I ain't too stubborn to, to make apologies. <laughs> we, we, now, we got 10 or 12 hours before Stockton. I say, let's just forget all these little disagreements. That's better, Mr. Lester. Relay station! over there. It's awful quiet. Suits me fine. Been salted. Look. 
better get inside. It's just sitting out there on that ridge like a vulture. Well, we'll just sit right here and out waiting. I'll see if I can find something to eat. Lester, how about a nice, uh, friendly game of cards? <laughs> Somebody has a match, I'll put a fire under it. Here you are, ma'am. Hmm. You can bet your bottom dollar that leak in the water keg was no accident. What about that pebble that lamed our lead horse? <laughs> well, you're all talking kind of crazy, like that fellow's some kind of a magician or something. Like he can be all places at one time, like, like, like he knows every move we make. You in the cabin! You won't get hurt, you do what you're told. I want the girl. Leave the girl, the rest of you can ride out, else you'll all die. be ready in a few minutes. Do you recognize it? You've been shopping at Chef's ever since it opened, just before you left for High Ridge. Remember, you bought Nick a pair of silver spurs there because he stayed up two nights helping you fold Betsy. Uh, Nick is your brother, and you'll be seeing him soon, and you'll be seeing your other two brothers, Jared and he. Oh, Audra. Audra, Audra, I know what you've been through. It was a nightmare. But it's over now. It's all over. You can't shut your mind off forever. Audrey, you are going to listen to me. I am going to make you remember. Now listen to me. Now, we'll start at the beginning. You were in the attic bedroom. Two drunken cowboys broke into the house. And when they couldn't find what they wanted, they tortured the Millers. They used a knife on the lane. Nothing could stop them. And then they killed them. Now face it. Face it. They killed them in cold blood. They would have killed you too. But they couldn't find you. But you're safe now. You're here with me and you're safe. And I won't let anybody hurt you. I'm going to take you home. Home to the family that loves you. I... Oh, God. Oh. You stink to high heaven, Lassiter. Well, why should we give up our lives for some girl we never laid eyes on three days ago? Well, that's what we're all thinking, ain't it? Oh, shut up, will you? No, let the man talk. Man's got a right to talk. Anyways, look at it. She can't understand a word we're saying. Do you, honey?
keep these. That's a pretty good trick, Matson. Now, how about making that rider disappear? She don't know sun up from a high wind. I say we ought to do what that fella out there says. Leave her here and we ride on. Well, how do we know? Maybe he don't mean her any harm. Uh, who'd want to hurt a girl who, who ain't, well, well, ain't all there? Why would anybody want to send a girl who ain't all there? To whatever's outside that's turning some men's backbone into sawdust. If you weren't her ma, you'd feel the same as the rest of us. As you? Us, not counting the soldier boy. Now, he can believe all the mush he's fed about protecting the flag and the female race. But for me, I say you got no right asking the rest of us to stick our necks out. What do you say, Mr. Matson? Ma'am, I'm waiting for my ration of water so I can wash down these beans. Not that they're not cooked to a turn, ma'am. Is that all you can think of? No, Roy, Mr. Matson's right. He's a practical man. It is time for our water ration. Well, the water barrel's still on the stage. There should be enough in that to go around. You were about to express an opinion, Mr. Matson. I'm wondering why, why this man Took so much trouble to, to get this girl. It's plain as the nose on your face, ain't it? A man doesn't have to attempt murder to get a girl, Roy. Now, why are we jawing about that? Who cares why he wants her? Miss Barkley, earlier today you said that your daughter had a beautiful voice. Would it be too painful to tell us how she lost it? She saw three people tortured and murdered before her eyes. One of them a young girl, her best friend. And the shock was too much for her. And why was she spared? She was in the attic bedroom. And the killer didn't see her. And that's why he's coming here now to kill her, so that she won't identify him. A skunk like that ain't fit to breathe the same air she does. I'd get a real joy killing a man like that. Well, you have your chance, Roy. He's waiting right out there on that ridge. I'm betting, Mrs. Barkley, that he's the one that's hounding us. You betting against it? Does it matter? No, it don't. I've been rooting in the rocks and the mud for 20 years. At last they give me a chance to come up for air, I ain't gonna let nothing stop me. He's only one man. Pretty good man. He's got our food, our water. You're four to one. You got a blood feud with the killer. That's your business. My business is to get to Stockton. We'll get to Stockton, Lassiter. Maybe. Maybe too late for me. Maybe she won't be waiting for me. Maybe she'll think I'm not coming. She knows you love her. She'll wait. She don't know nothing about me except what I wrote in my letters. Mail order bride? Something wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. And she will wait for you. If we don't make a deal with that bushwhacker, I'll show up in a box. Oh, no, no, Mr. Lassiter. He's a coward. He'll never come within gun range. He's just trying to scare you off so he can kill a defenseless girl. And please, Please, don't let him. This is an easy place to defend. I'll take the first shift standing guard. And maybe tomorrow morning the horses will be rested and we can make Stockton by tomorrow night. Hold on, soldier boy. You might be needing this. Four to one, Lassiter. Looks like you lose. Ma'am, this time you keep your water ration. Careful, Mr. Matson. You'll be accused of being gallant. Not guilty. I only have one interest in your well-being, ma'am. We just can't afford to lose a good cook. Sure, I know you're worried. But there's no sense acting like the world's coming to an end just because the stage is a little late. A little late? It's ten minutes past five. Maybe we better ride out of ways, Nick. Look, can't you wait just a little while longer? Maybe they threw a wheel or busted an axle. Well, now, it'd only take a few minutes to fix a broken wheel, an hour at most for a broken axle. Come on, Nick, we waited too long already. Right. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Sure, I know what must have happened. The bridge over Pride's Gulch went out, and if it ain't been fixed, that means the stage has got to go by way of Greenfield. That'd bring it here in the morning. The morning? Oh, we don't charge any for the extra ride. They would have telegraphed, wouldn't they? Well, they can't do that. The wire ain't been strung through Greenfield yet. Well, we may as well go back to the ranch. Well, I'm sorry, boys. I'll tell them you were here. Yeah. Go on. 
Oh, now, I'll take over. He ain't made a move. How do you know? That campfire could be just for show. He could be crawling down that hill at us right now. You think so? I don't know the man. I don't know what's on his mind. If you want me to stay out here with you, I will. No. One of us is enough, I guess. You sure? Yep. I said so, didn't I? At least there's one good thing. She doesn't know what's happening. I apologize for that, Mrs. Barkley. That's all right, Roy. Solitaire. Would you like to play, pretty lady? Here. Take it. Red Jack goes on the Black Queen. Oh, my shotgun! And a horse. All on account of... of her! She ain't worth nothing! She ought to be put away! Oh, stop it! Stop it, both of you! Did you hear what he said? It doesn't matter now. He took the water. Whoever he is up there, he sure knows how to drive the pikers out of the game. These horses don't get water soon. They ain't gonna last. Neither are we, Barney. Well, the Watson Ranch has a line cabin up in the hills. Maybe 20 miles off the trail. They got food stashed away there. Maybe they got water, too. Water? But you're not sure? No, I ain't sure they got water. And I ain't sure two horses in their condition can pull a full stage for 20 miles. Mister, I ain't sure of nothing. Morning, ma'am. I don't suppose he's gone yet. 
I doubt it. Barney says there may be some water at a cabin up in the hills. Meanwhile, um, why don't you put this in your mouth? Relieve the thirst. The heritage my father left me. Didn't your mother tell you to wash it off first? Oh, my mother. My mother wasn't around long enough to tell me anything. When my father lost his job at the woolen mills at Hartford, why, my mother couldn't stand the strain, so she ran off with a more affluent drummer. I was 10 years old at the time. And so, at 10 years old, your opinion of women was born, hmm? And at 20 years old when I got married for the first time, and at 30 years old when I got married for the second time. And did they run off with the fluent drummers, too? Well, frankly, ma'am, I just wiped it out of my mind uh, why my marriages were such a disaster, but don't get me wrong, I don't blame any of them for their lack of character. It's a woman's nature. Well, maybe it was your lack of good judgment. Maybe. Roy, where's Audra? Well, I don't know. Well, I thought she was with you. No. Check the shack in the back. I'll check the stables. Audra. Audra! scared him off. In any case, we better get back to the stage. Come on. You all right, Mrs. Barkley? Yes, I'm all right. Thank you. Audra's all right, too, Roy. Sure, sure. We're all all right. Now, let's get moving. Don't discourage easy. He got us beat. But how did he get here before us? Doesn't matter how. He just did. There ain't a drop of water between here and Stockton. Well, we can survive longer than that without water. Look. Lady, I'm checking out. Oh, no. Will $5,000 get you to stay? Lady, where does a dead man spend $5,000? Don't unhitch that horse. That horse is company property. I just bought it. And Mr. Matson has a gun to see that the deal sticks. Well, if Mr. Matson has the brains of a goose egg, he'll check out with me. 
Each of you gets $5,000 the minute my daughter and I set foot in Stockton. Oh, I don't need pay for the privilege of escorting you and your daughter to Stockton, Mrs. Barkley. The purpose of the young is to make the old seem greedy and corrupt. I accept your offer, Mrs. Barkley. We can't force you to stay. Now, that's a prime choice, ma'am. Go on foot without water and die alone, or stay here and die with some company. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. I'll see to that. All right, Barney, let's get out of here. Could be. Sure, any of us go for that water bag, he's got a clear shot. We've got to have water. Anybody volunteer? He might not shoot at a woman. He might not. He's not gonna let that water bag get back to this stage. And being a woman ain't gonna stand in his way. One man less would suit him just fine. Well, you can quit your arguing. We've got our volunteer. driving. I figure we got no choice. You're right. Horses have to pull this stage a couple of miles more, they'll drop. Now, when I ride out of here, you get up in those rocks. One man with a gun up there could hold off an army. He's gonna chase me. He's gotta come right by here, so you'll have an easy shot. You're the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I'll be back with help. Come. He's not following him. I guess he figures there's just one less man. Let's get up on those rocks. The second one, after all. You, you mean that you knew there were two of them? At High Ridge, they told me there were two, but since we only saw one, I thought only one followed us. 
And you held back, Mrs. Yes, Barclay? I held back. I'd lie. I would do anything to save my daughter. One horse left, mister. You can ride out peaceful. You ride out now. Oh, no, no, you can't. You're not that kind of a man. Lassiter and Barney can ride off to save their own skins, but not you. It would stay with you for the rest of your life. I never go against a stacked deck, ma'am. If there was a chance, But I'd you're stay. not an animal. You can't ride away and leave us. We're all animals, Mrs. Barkley. We're all kin to the beasts of the field. The only difference is man knows he's going to die, and sometimes he gets a chance to die a little later than sooner. And I intend to die later. Then leave me your gun. I can't do that, man. Those men may change their mind about letting me go peaceful. I wish there was something I could do. You can leave me your gun. I've got to have a gun. Bye, ma'am. Arthur, come with me. Arthur, come with me. Those men, those men, they want to kill you. Don't you understand? They want to kill you. Now, come with me.
Marjorie, here, here, take my hand. Come on. That young boy I told you about, Roy Sanders, I owe him $5,000. I'd, I'd like to send it to his family. Audra, this is Mr. Henry Matson, my daughter, Mr. Matson. How do you do, Mr. Matson? The pleasure is all mine, ma'am. You do have a beautiful voice. You caught the stage at Ravenwood, ma'am, huh? We did. Goodbye. Uh, Miss Barkley, I am, um, I'm glad you made it. And as you predicted, I, I'm finding it difficult to live with myself, if that gives you any satisfaction. It gives me no satisfaction, Mr. Matson. <laughs> 